Hey, everybody, welcome back to Pep Talk, your podcast that gives you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. We take complex medical, health, and wellness conversations, break them down so they're real simple, give you daily action steps on things that you can do to help yourself and improve the lives of your loved ones as well. I'm your host, Dr. Eric Naputi. I'm going to be taking you down this journey to explore the topic today of peptides. Many of you have now started to hear about peptides and peptide therapies. So let's break those down. Let's go into depth a little bit. Let's talk about some action steps of peptides. But first, let me just say this. Peptides have, are nothing new. They've been around for a long time. Many of you are taking peptides in your medications. There are certain blood pressure medications, certain pain relievers, certain other therapeutics that are out there that are peptide-driven uh, 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 pharmaceutical drugs. There are also peptides that are in the nutraceutical and natural supplement space. Things like glutathione and NAD and collagen and creatine and some of the other vitamins that are out there are peptide derivatives. Um, so peptides are, are, are nothing new. And what are peptides? Peptides are nothing more than groups of amino acids stuck together. You see, protein really is the signaling to life of our body. We need massive amounts of protein to make the tissues, the cells, the organs, the organ systems in our body. And peptides help with, peptides are made of those proteins. Proteins break down into amino acids. Amino acids then start to form these little chains and they stick together in these long chains. Some of them are short, some of them are a little longer. Peptides could be as short as two amino acids and as long as 200 amino acids. And there's different kinds of peptides. And now we're starting to hear more about peptides. We're starting to talk more about peptides. But I want to break it down to you because, folks, I don't want this peptide thing to be another fad. I've been using peptides in my office for almost two decades. I've, I've been recommending peptides for patients for almost two decades. They're amazing and they're healthy and they're safe if done right. But just like anything, if you overdo anything, that's going to cause a, a problem. If I take too much caffeine, that's an issue. But if I don't take enough, that could be a problem. If I don't have enough B vitamins, I'm going to have sickness and illnesses and problems. But if I take too much, I'm going to have issues. I mean, if I have too much water, I'm going to dehydrate or dilute my body and ultimately can cause dehydration. And if I have way too much water, I can drown. But if I don't have enough, I could die. I mean, there's a balance of everything. So let's talk a little bit about peptides. Let's talk about trusted sources of peptides and 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 let's let's really kind of get into this. So so what are peptides? Peptides really are are a couple different things. There there's different types of peptides and some of them are hormonal based peptides and some of them are are organic natural peptides and different peptides do different things but to make it simple peptides are strung together amino acids in a chain. And that chain is like a a program. If you are a computer programmer, you're going to write a code. And that code is going to go into your program. And that program is going to be read by your cells, by your DNA, and other compounds in your body to produce a physiological response. Look, it says right here, peptide therapy is emerging. It's an emerging nutraceutical domain that has gained strong interest among clinicians and clinical research. While peptides are naturally present in the body, and key to proper physiological function, innovative studies have now uncovered healing effects of synthetic peptides and naturally occurring peptides that can be put together in supplements and nutraceutical forms and in pharmaceutical forms. This characteristic could detail mainstream changes in future aspects of health, safety, and healthcare and medicine moving forward. So let's talk about some of these peptides that are out here. Let's talk about some of them. Whoop. Some of the peptides that are present to this day are things like BPC-157, injury recovering peptides. Let me pull my notes up a little here. I can see them a little bit better. So we've got, we've got BPC-157. We've got TB-500 that are injury recovery peptides. We've got peptides that are here to uh, help with uh, sunless tanning, right? You can take peptides to help you tan. These are uh, melatonin and, and melatonin-2. By the way, those are really good for the immune system. There are peptides that improve body composition, ipamorlin, CJC, um, somergelin. I'm a huge fan of sermolian. I use sermolian. It helps with growth factor. MK677, that peptide. There are weight loss peptides. There are anti-aging peptides. There are sexual improvement peptides. There are skincare peptides, immune system peptides, and much more much more. Folks, I want you to understand that, that the risk of peptide administration is not high. 
The problem is, is that now peptides are making the mainstream because of, you know, semi-glutide and the weight loss components that we hear with Ozimbic and, you know, trizepatide and Wagovia and all these other, you know, pharmaceutical based uh, peptides that are on the market. The problem is peptides are bioactive and, and they're, they're actually, they, they really do a great job signaling to your cells what to do. The problem is, is in the world today, there are no known dosages. There are known standards of dosages for peptides on the market. We see people right now injecting themselves daily or weekly with 50, 100, up to 250 milligrams of, of peptides. And we don't know short-term and long-term, is that beneficial? Is that a therapeutic dose? Is that going to cause side effects? Now we know that the folks that have been doing the uh, high-dose semi-glutide injections, Ozimbic, Wagovia, all those things, they absolutely cause more harm than good. And they're very problematic with the body. But we now know that small dosages, micro-dosing, and even macro-dosing of peptides are safe and effective for signaling the cells. Um, where should you buy peptides? Well, you should get them from trusted sources. Get them from sources that have done studies. Get them from nutraceutical or pharmaceutical companies that show where the peptides come from, that you understand what kinds of peptides that are out there. And there's all kinds of sources, but peptides right now are not cheap. And it has a lot to do with supply and demand. You know, you could go and take uh, Ozimbic or Wagovia. It could be $1,000 to $1,200 a month. You could go to certain websites and buy injectable forms of Peptides like BBC 157 for $150 a month or, or Ipamorin could be 100 a month or taking multiple peptides per, per day on a monthly basis could cost you hundreds or thousands of dollars a month. Just because you're spending a lot of money on those don't mean, it does not mean that they're, they're effective. So understanding, and a lot of people who show peptides now are for research purposes only because there's been some regulatory changes that have happened in the world of peptides. Why? Because they work. And the issue, too, is when things work, a lot of times people will abuse those things. And just so you know, from a legality standpoint, if I take a peptide, just like if I take a vitamin, if I take vitamin B and I take vitamin B orally, that's a supplement. If I take vitamin B as a shot and I inject it into my body, that now is technically a drug. Well, peptides are the same way. If I take a peptide by an injection, that's, that's a drug. And I, I, I need or should need a prescription for that. If I take a peptide orally, it's now a supplement. It's under different regulatory processes. But the thing is, is the reason why you don't see a lot of conversations about oral peptides is because there's, there's not been a lot of research and data done on oral peptides. There really hasn't need to be been one because peptides usually were prescribed by doctors or individuals that were really in the health and wellness space you know, maybe they're competitive bodybuilders or maybe they're sports athletes and they understand the benefits of, of peptides and they can get them from an injection form. Now, with the influx of peptides being such a common conversation piece, there's now new technology like using phytomicroencapsulization for absorption, utilizing um, uh, lipid nanotechnology for absorption, um, nanosizing the peptides by themselves or attaching molecules or manipulating the, the peptide themselves or turning the peptide into a drug for a delivery system. Those are ways we can get those peptides in our body orally. But I need you to understand that there's just no, there's no set of regulations for dosing. You can't take a blood test to see what peptides you're deficient in, at least not to this day. It's not, if there is one, it's not commercially available. And peptide science is out there. There are, there's been, tens of thousands of studies done on all the peptides that are out there. And there's, there, there's probably an infinite amount of peptide combinations that are on the market. And again, all those peptides are, are those different amino acids put together in different sequences to cause a different physiological response in the body. Uh, a, a couple of things that I'll tell you, let's talk about a few peptides that are very common. TB150, by the way, let me give you this disclaimer. Most peptides are banned by WADA. You know what WADA is? It's the World Anti-Doping Association. Um, why did they make it that way? Because there's a negative connotation behind certain peptides and testosterone, certain peptides and improvement of um, uh, growth hormone. And so people assume, and a lot of times assuming, you know, does what it does. It makes an ass out of you and me. That's assuming. But they assume because a peptide is injected, it's exactly the same as a, as a, as a testosterone or hormone shot. It's not. And the side effects are, 
are very minimal with these peptides. In fact, most of the peptides on the market, especially taken in micro doses and especially taken orally, are generally recognized as safe by organizations across the globe. And quite honestly, a lot of the regulators that are out there don't understand how to categorize peptides anyway. They're just chains of amino acids put together. So let's talk about TB150. TB150 is a synthetic derived uh, a compound that's naturally occurring protein that has 43 amino acids in it. So 43 amino acid combo that has been shown to reduce inflammation um, and when properly uh, uh, administered can improve growth hormone, growth factor, and et cetera. Melatonin 1 uh, and melatonin 2 um, are um, uh, peptides that can improve the immune system function, brain health, and it can help with sleeping and it can help make your skin darker. If you want a natural way to, to get your skin darker, melatonin 1 and melatonin 2 can do that. Ipamorlin, which is one of the peptides that I use on a regular basis, ipamorlin is a, it, it's a, it's a peptide. It's a, a five-sided peptide. It's five different amino acids in it. And it's been shown um, in studies to uh, combat muscle uh, catabolism, so weakening of muscles, making muscles smaller, which as we get older, our muscles catabolize. And certain metabolic disorders, muscles catabolize. So ipamorlin's a big one. If you have, you know, kidney issues or protein metabolism issues, or if you're dealing with with aging from muscle loss, ipamorlin has been shown to help improve that. CJC uh, uh, twelve ninety five is a body composition formula um, that improves growth hormone and 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 helps uh, with um, uh, um, blocking certain uh, degenerative processes in the body. A sermolean is a big one. It improves body composition. It's a synthetic um, a human growth hormone uh, uh, booster. Uh, MK667 improves it. Tessamorlin is a big one for weight loss. Um, let's see some other big ones. Oh, man, uh, collagen peptide. I use collagen peptide in several of my formulas that we created for skin issues and for hair issues. Um, it's a peptide uh, associated with uh, numerous healing and protective uh, and regenerative uh, uh, medicine aspects, um, it's been shown to um, uh, promote collagen synthesis, which so many people take collagen, but if you don't have collagen peptide, the collagen may not do the work it's supposed to do. So that's a that's a really big a really big deal. And um, the the research and data on these peptides is pretty substantial that it's safe, it's beneficial, and peptides have a role in cell signaling technology. It's one of the the four or five compounds we talk about that 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 go down and wake up the cells and tell them what to do. You know, you can have all the vitamins, minerals, nutrients, the raw materials in your body to 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 repair tissues, but if you don't have those, what I call worker bees or or contractors to grab the raw materials and build that back up, peptides are a part of that. Your body ages faster. When we get over the age of of um, thirty, we lose ninety percent function of our body's ability to break down protein enough to extract the uh, the amino acids that then get digested and absorbed into the body and get put into those peptides. The body makes peptides, but as we age, it doesn't do it that well. So if you're supplementing peptides, whether you're doing injections under the guides of a, uh, of a physician, or if you're getting over-the-counter peptides that actually absorb and are utilized, I recommend strongly, and most, um, most functional medicine practitioners would recommend the same, that you're utilizing peptides because you, you've got to supplement your body with things that aren't working anymore. And as we age, we lose our enzymes, our stem cells, our, our peptides, our um, gut bacteria, uh, our hormone function, and supplementing those is a game changer. So remember, folks, knowledge is power, but wisdom is taking that knowledge and ruling and applying it to your life. So peptides, I'm a huge fan. I get asked questions about it all the time. I'd rather take oral peptides if possible than get injections, but I still use injections because some peptides are so big, it's really hard to get them into those delivery uh, mechanisms to get them past the stomach into the small intestine where they can be absorbed into the bloodstream. So folks, I want to encourage you to go back and and and, and watch this podcast, share it with friends and family members. Make sure you go to our website. That's uh, peptalk.world. That's peptalk.world. Like, share, subscribe. You know, if you're using peptides, tag us on social media. I want to see the peptides you're using. I want to hear the results that you're getting. And I want to see the knowledge and wisdom that you're applying to your life because Again, I want to give you the map, the keys, and the car, but I want to see you driving it to a happier, healthier, and ultimately wealthier you.
Folks, until we meet again, I'm Dr. Eric Naputi. God bless you. God bless America. And God bless the world. Stay smart out there, folks. And I'll see you on the next podcast. Be well.